This is the coldest, driest, but brightest continent on Earth. 98% of this place is perennially covered in ice, and this is the only continent in the world with no native human population. Despite the terrifying conditions, this place is also the setting for massive expeditions and explorations throughout history. Every day, people from all over the world labor over works in scientific progress, exchanging ideas and encountering new phenomena that will and have changed the world. The ancient Greek philosophers hypothesized that a southern landmass existed in order to balance out the north heavy world that they knew. Terra Australis Incognita, meaning unknown southern land, remained such until about the 19th century. In 1772, British adventurer James Cook set out on the first of many expeditions to the Antarctic. For three years, Cook sailed searching for this great southern land. By 1775, he had yet to even catch sight of it. Despite his failure to find Antarctica, Cook was the first to cross the Antarctic Circle. This led to further expeditions throughout the 1800s to venture as far south as possible. Scores of explorers began discovering and setting foot on islands surrounding the continent before ultimately finding its mainland. The first sufficiently documented landing on the Antarctic mainland was made in 1853 by Mercator Cooper on the Oates coast of East Antarctica. This only served as a catalyst for more probing expeditions to the now known southern land. In 1893, Dr. John Murray of England delivered a lecture to the International Geographical Society in London extolling the virtues of possible geographical inquiry in the Antarctic. Following this, in 1895, the Society passed a general resolution that called on scientific societies all over the world to promote the cause of Antarctic exploration, for such work would bring additions to almost every branch of science. This age of exploration officially began with the 1897 inaugural expedition launched by the Belgian Geographical Society, which collected the first annual cycle of Antarctic observations. The first mate of the expedition, Roald Amundsen, would later be the leader of the first expedition to reach the South Pole. From 1910 to 1912, the Norwegian explorer Amundsen made the historic trek to the geographic South Pole, traveling by means of skis and sledge dogs. Robert Falcon Scott of the British Navy was also attempting to reach the South Pole at this time. Unfortunately, Scott reached 90 degrees south five weeks after Amundsen. Scott's so-called Terra Nova expedition yielded, however, the discovery of plant fossils in the ice, proving that at one point Antarctica was forested and joined with the other continents. The end of the Age of Exploration is considered to be marked by the ill-fated Shackleton Row expedition, which took place from 1921 to 1922. In Sir Ernest Shackleton's last adventure, the ship, the Quest, was inadequate for Antarctic sailing, unable to break through the packed ice. The expedition's failure and death of Shackleton brought about the end of the heroic age. In the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, Antarctic exploration reached a new medium, that of aircraft. U.S. Navy Admiral Richard Evelyn Byrd became the first pilot to fly his bird across the Antarctic. His objective in flying across the South Pole was mainly one of science. The use of aero technology allowed extensive discoveries to be made in the geography of the continent. Once discovered, Antarctica called out as a land unclaimed to the imperialistic powers all over the world. All the possibilities had yet to be uncovered, therefore various nations undertook such expeditions to claim the land for themselves. The eight countries who have claimed territory in Antarctica are Chile, Argentina, the United Kingdom, Norway, Australia, New Zealand, and France. Although these countries' claims overlap in certain areas, the International Geophysical Year promoted international cooperation for all countries involved in Antarctica. The International Geophysical Year, or IGY, occurring from July 1, 1957 to December 31, 1958, was proposed by the International Council of Scientific Unions in 1952 to allow scientists across the world to participate in a large series of coordinated observations on geophysical happenings. This triggered an explosion of participation in Antarctic science. 
In fact, the IGY was originally based off of the international polar years from 1882 to 1883 and 1932 to 1933, which were years of investigation into the polar regions. As a direct result of the IGY came its diplomatic counterpart, the Antarctic Treaty. The Antarctic Treaty put the actions and cooperations experienced during the IGY into words. The treaty set aside Antarctica as a reserve for science, instituted freedom of scientific inquiry, and banned all military activity from the continent. These articles have safeguarded and promoted the use of Antarctica as a haven for scientific research, exploration, and exchange ever since. Perhaps Antarctica's most tangible contribution is its ideal settings for science experiments and empirical data collection. The skies and air are almost always clear, being relatively uncontaminated by the pollution that results from human civilization. This makes the data collected by instruments such as balloons much more objective and uncontaminated as well. One of the scientists' main focuses is climate change. Antarctica makes up a large portion of the cryosphere. It is a large sheet of ice which effectively preserves each year of climate history in a readable storybook. These storybooks come in the form of ice cores, which scientists have to drill deep under the ground to extract. From them, scientists are able to identify patterns that occur in average air temperature and concentration of different compounds. Such data and analysis is crucial to helping people understand climate change and even predict future climate patterns. Logically then, the same results can also contribute analysis to the global warming situation since the concentration of greenhouse gases at different points in time can also be calculated. If the polar caps were to melt, large areas of land would be submerged regardless of human life. Scientific study in Antarctica has led to an eye-opening discovery, the ozone hole over Antarctica. The discovery has called people's attention to their harmful ways of living. Many of the chemicals that human machinery releases are broken down into very reactive chemicals by the sun that react with ozone, depleting the Earth's protective layer. The exchange of this information between nations in the world has resulted in worldwide efforts to protect Earth and decrease the harmful substances humans release into the air. Among other subjects, scientists also studied the unique ecosystem that has developed in the harsh, extreme conditions of the Antarctic. Allowing this are about 75 research stations in Antarctica established by a variety of different nations, some even in conjunction with another. The encounters and consequent exchanges between foreign nations that occurred as a result of Antarctic exploration resulted in the peaceful cooperation between powers to further the development of human society through scientific research and discoveries. <laughs>